Welcome to today's episode of Proving Kepler's Laws with Nick Whiffen. Uh, I'm in the Integrated Science program in second year at McMaster University, and today I'll be proving Kepler's second and third laws of planetary motion. Kepler's second law states that a line joining a planet and the sun sweeps out equal areas during equal intervals of time. Mathematically, this means that dA by dt must be a constant. Or, uh, if we say that in words, the derivative of area with respect to time must be a constant. So how are we going to get there? Well, we know that uh, area is the integral of one-half r squared. So we must show somehow that r squared is a constant. So we need an expression for r squared. Uh, what better way to start than using our known vectors, which are uh, in terms of r. So those are the vectors that uh, describe planetary motion, including r the position vector and the velocity vector. The position of the planet can be measured using polar coordinates. Uh, so we have the conventional x equals r cos theta and y equals r sine theta. So r and theta are both functions of t in this case, and this is, these are the coordinates we'll be using for our equations. This is, of course, assuming that uh, the position and uh, velocity vectors lie in the xy plane. In order to find the velocity vector, we simply have to take the derivative of the position vector, uh, which will give us this equation which looks complicated, but uh, we'll be able to simplify it with further calculations. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross the radius vector with the velocity vector. And that gets us this equation, um, since it's a cross product. Uh, it looks complicated at first, however we can uh, expand it, and then we end up being able to cancel two of the uh, factors out and then we get a much simpler equation which uh, can simplify using the Pythagorean identity which is cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1 so this should leave us with r squared times d theta by dt and we'll multiply this by k as well because this is the unit vector um, in the direction perpendicular to the two vectors r and v. We will label this resultant vector h, and h is in the direction, direction of k with the magnitude r squared times d theta by dt. Now if we simply divide uh, each side we have by k, the unit vector k, then on uh, the left side where we have h, we will get the magnitude of h with no vector associated with it. And on the right side with k, we will simply get a value of 1 because it, we're dividing k by k. As a side note, we can show that h is a constant by taking its derivative, which is equal to two cross products of parallel vectors, which gives us 0 and therefore a derivative of 0. So now going back to what I mentioned earlier about the area formula, um, I mentioned that area is equal in polar coordinates to the integral um, of one half r squared times d theta. Um, and this will give us the area swept out by a planet. However, we are looking for the uh, change in area with respect to time. So uh, we take the derivative of this, and the derivative of, of an integral is consequently the uh, integrand, or luckily, not consequently, the integrand, and um, therefore we get uh, d alpha, or the change in area with respect to time is one half r squared. Now we can sub in our formula that we had before. If we isolate for r squared, uh, to get uh, h over 
e theta by dt. We can sub this into our new equation up here, and we get a value of d a by dt equals h over 2. This uh, proves Kepler's law as we've just shown that the change in area with respect to time is a constant. Alright, so Kepler's third law is that the square of the orbital period of a planet is directly proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis of its orbit. Now, if you'll remember, the semi-major axis is the long axis of an ellipse. So, our goal will be to show that uh, t squared, or the period of the orbit squared, is equal to 4 pi squared over gm times a cubed. And 4 pi squared over gm is a constant term, so this is actually showing that is that the period is directly proportional. Uh, we can actually see with the planets, um, with the inner planets, that there's a direct linear relationship between these two. All right. So recall from the second law of proof that the derivative of area with respect to time was h over two. We can rearrange this to get dA is equal to h over 2 times dt. And upon integrating this from 0 to t, a capital T, which is the period, uh, we can get pi ab is equal to h over, t, h over 2 times t. And then rearranging this, we can get 2 pi ab over h is equal to t. So this is based on the fact that the area of an ellipse is equal to pi a b. When you integrate dA from 0 to t, capital T, you get the fully enclosed area of the ellipse. Alright, so kind of we're going to step aside and go down a different route now and um, show something that will help us prove our equation in the end, kind of like we did in the last one. So we know that um, h squared over gm is equal to ed, and I'll show you how we know that. Um, in Stewart's calculus book, Early Tran Transcendentals, 6th edition, uh, it shows that d is equal to h squared over c, and e is equal to c over gm. All right, well, we'll define those in a second. And when we combine these, uh, we get h squared over gm is equal to ed. So this is what we just said we know. And um, just to clarify, d is the directrix, um, which is a line used to uh, measure ellipses, parabolas, and uh, hyperboles. And uh, e is the eccentricity of the ellipse. So we can subsequent, subsequently show that ED is equal to B squared over A, where B and A are the semi-minor and semi-major axis respectively as depicted here. So by using certain known equations, again from Stewart's uh, calculus book, uh, we can show that this equation is true and move forward with our proof. And now we can combine uh, the equations we just solved with the equation that we found before. Uh, they're depicted here. Uh, so if we, on the left side, if we square uh, the equation, and on the right side, if we isolate h squared, we can sub h squared from the right into h squared from the left uh, directly. And this gets us t squared equal to 4 pi squared a cubed b squared over gm b squared and we can cancel uh, the b squared out on the top and bottom and this leaves us with um, this equation and oh whoa whoa what was that oh I, I guess we're there already so we just showed that 
uh, t squared, or the square of the period, is proportional to the uh, cube of the semi-major semi axis because all of the other terms are constant. Uh, thank you for tuning into this episode of Proving Kepler's Law. Nick with me. And here are some references. <laughs>